Welcome everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at R for Data Science. Now in this section we're going to be looking at the exciting discipline uh, that allows us to turn raw data into understanding, insights, and knowledge. Now the goal of this course is going to be using these tools to allow you to perform data science tasks. Now, after taking this course, you're going to be able to use tools to tackle a wide variety of data science challenges using the best parts of R. Now, what are you going to learn? Data science is a massive field, okay? And you can't master it in a single course, let alone almost in your lifetime. The goal of this course is to give you a solid foundation and the most important tools. Now, the model that we're going to be following is of a typical data science project. Okay, learning to import data, tidy data, transform data, visualize data, model data, and finally communicate. Now, what are you going to learn? Most importantly, you're going to learn to import data into R. Now, once you've imported that data, it's a great idea to tidy it and clean it. Okay, once you've cleaned the data, the best step is to transform it, then visualize it, then model it. The last step is to be able to communicate and surrounding all of these tools is going to be programming. Now, what is importing data? Okay, this typically means that data is stored in a file or a database, and we are able to load it into a data frame in R. Okay, if you can't get your data into R, you're definitely not going to be able to perform any analysis on it. Tidying data means storing it in a consistent format. Okay, now this usually has to do with columns and rows, okay? Tidy data is important because it, with consistent structure, this is going to help us get rid of all the struggles about question, questions about the data, not fighting the data the whole way through the project. Now, transformation of data includes narrowing down the observations of interest, okay? Creating new variables and uh, functions from existing variables. Okay, we also should be able to calculate our summary statistics. Now, together with tidying and transforming data, this is what we call wrangling. Now, because of getting your data into a form that's natural to work with is often going to feel like a fight. Now, once we have our tidy data, okay, then we're going to be able to visualize and model our data. Visualization, okay, can show you things that you've never could have thought about your data. It usually raises new questions about the data and also is a great way to give you hints at maybe you're asking the wrong question about your data, but also gives you a way and a path forward. Now, once you have made your question sufficiently precise, you, we should be able to use mathematical models to, and um, computational tools, okay? Now, this is going to be a great way to use the computer's brain and power okay but every model needs to make assumptions and by its very nature a model cannot question its own assumptions that means that the model cannot and should not surprise you in its outcome communication it doesn't matter how good our models are or how beautiful our visualizations are if we don't understand them and we cannot communicate the results to others it's going to be meaningless and the surrounding ideas of all of this is programming Programming cuts across all disciplines, okay? You don't need to be an expert programmer to be a data scientist or a data analyst, but the more you know about programming, the better off you're going to be because you're going to be able to automate the most common tasks and solve new problems with a lot of ease. Now, again, the rule that we need to look at for data science projects is that a majority of the time, we're going to have the 80-20% rule okay you tackle about 80 percent of every project is going to be the tools that we learned in this book and then you're going to need other tools to tackle the remaining 20 percent now how is this course going to be organized okay first off we're going to be starting by ingesting and tidying data okay well specifically we want to take that tidy data and we want to visualize it now some topics are going to be uh, best explained with other tools but programming tools are not necessarily going to be the most interesting part um, in and of itself. Now let's kind of go back to topic two. Some topics are best explained with other tools, okay? Now for example, maybe we believe that it's easier to understand how models work if we already know about the visualizations, tidying data, and programming it. 
Now, when, when we look at our programming tools, okay, we'll give you a selection of programming tools in, throughout the course, okay, so that you're going to be able to combine the data science tools and tackle the interesting problems. Now, how are we going to organize this? Within each section, we're going to try our best to stick to a similar pattern. We're going to start off with examples, and then we're going to look at the big picture, okay? And then we'll start to really dive into the details. Each section of the course is going to be paired with exercises, which you're hopefully will be able to turn in afterwards. And then this will also be a better way to practice real world problems. Now, what are going to be our prerequisites? Okay, we've made a few assumptions. Okay, and that's at least for you to get the best out of the course. Again, we hope that you are numerically literate, meaning you can do a little bit of math. Okay, now it's also going to be helpful if you have some programming experience. If you haven't, there are a lot of tools at your disposal to take a look. And you can also contact me if you have any other questions. Other prerequisites, okay, four things you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have R, an R Studio, and a collection of packages called the Tidyverse. And then maybe a handful of other packages, and I'll teach you guys how to install those as we go along. Now, you can also use RStudio Cloud, and I would suggest to use this because um, everything's already set up for you. So R you can download from CRAN and follow, follow their basic online instructions on how to download everything. RStudio is an IDE. Okay, for our programming, go to rstudio.com and download it. And again, for students, I would suggest you go to RStudio Cloud and use that as well. Uh, and again, make sure that you're always up to date. So update R and R, update RStudio as much as possible, okay? Whenever a new update comes, go on and update it. It'll help clean up a lot of issues that you have uh, throughout coding. Now, here, this is actually the base, uh, baseline of what our studio looks like. Okay, now here, we actually have the environment. Now, over on the right or the left hand side here, we have the console. This is where you would actually type up a program. Then, on the, uh, for example, here, there, we're giving an example of using ggplot to plot uh, miles per gallon data for displacement and highway miles. And we want a point plot or a scatter plot. And you can see the output in the lower right hand corner. And this is going to show us uh, all of the data as well as the color scheme by the class of car. And again, we will we'll actually create this example later on in the class. Now the tidyverse. Again, all you really need to uh, install is these R packages. Okay, using the code install packages install dot packages tidyverse. Again, you can do this on your own computer, but if you're using R Studio Cloud, it's already been installed for you. Now again, whenever we look at the tidyverse, it's actually a collection of other packages. This includes ggplot, uh, tibble, tidier, reader, per, dplyr, string r, and forecats. Okay, and don't worry about any of these uh, conflict statements that you see. Okay, we'll take care of those as we move on if they if issues arise. Now, other packages that we will be using okay are the NYC flights database gapminder and uh, Lehem okay now these are basically uh, data sets that contain airline flight data world development data and baseball data that are going to help us uh, illustrate key data science ideas we will also go through uh, several different data sets that we've constructed for the class that are more um, designed for uh, data science and business needs Okay, and we'll go through those as we go throughout the course. Now, when we're looking at running code, okay, uh, I would suggest that you guys open up RStudio, okay, or RStudio Cloud, and uh, type these into the console as we go. Um, throughout the class, you'll actually see a lot of the code that will look very similar to this in our slides, okay? Now, here we're just doing basic uh, mathematical operations. And again, this is, this is what I would say the output. This is what we type in, and this would be the output. Okay, now if you're running this in your local console, this is actually what the output will look like. So don't be afraid that they don't look the same. Now when we run uh, code, okay, throughout the course we need to be consistent in, in the conventions that we use, okay? Functions are, are in the code, and for example, they'll have the following parentheses. So you'll have the function, such as sum, and then you'll have a set of parentheses 
or similar, we have mean, which is a function, okay? This is our function call, and then we have a pair of parentheses at the end. And again, either a variable will go inside of the parentheses or some, uh, uh, some numbers or uh, a vector of sorts, okay? And again, other objects in R, okay? Um, like data science functions, okay? So we have um, code font, okay? And you can see here that like the flights data or X looks a little bit different, okay? The flights and, data, um, and X will be a little bit more, let's call them italicized. And again, if we want to make it clear that we're using a specific piece of a package, you'll see us use the dplyr, for example, is the package name, colon, colon, mutate, and mutate is a function within that package. Okay, and again, you'll have your parentheses here and you'll have information in the parentheses. Again, the same thing with the flights. Uh, the flights NYC package, okay, we'll use the colon colon to access the flights data uh, frame inside of the NYC flights uh, package. Again, this is also valid R code. Now, getting help and learning more. Again, guys, you should be able to use Google to get a majority of your answers, okay? Adding R to any query that you're going to be having is going to help you out a lot. Um, and chances are someone else has already asked the question. Another thing that we will be looking for and I'll ask you guys to use is Stack Overflow. Again, it, it, most of the time, usually when you use Google, you're, it'll probably send you back to Stack Overflow. Okay, now if you're wanting to restrict your search, make sure you place R in your search bar. Okay, and this will help it because again, Stack Overflow has all kinds of programming language help, such as Python, SQL, Java, C++, etc. Now again, getting more help, okay? There's three things that you need whenever you're looking for help and searching for help, okay? You need to make sure that you can have a completely reproducible error. Okay, you need to have the required package, some sort of data, and then the code. Okay, don't use any type of pri uh, proprietary data. Okay, that, that won't help you very much. Make sure that it, you use a small subset of data that you can actually recreate your error over and over again. Finally, again, for reproducible examples, again, your packages are going to be key. Okay. Uh, also, make sure that you need to maybe update your packages, okay? Because maybe uh, an update is needed in order to run the new, uh, the new analysis. Again, the easiest way to include data in a question is to use the dput function, okay? And this generates R code to help recreate it. Now, um, for example, the empty cars data set in R, uh, we can perform the following steps. We run uh, dput empty cars into R copy the output, and in the reproducible script, type MT cars, the arrow, and then paste all of that code. Okay, and then this would uh, find the smallest subset of data that still reveals the problem. Spend a little bit of time also making sure that your code is easy to read, okay? Give comments, make sure that you use spaces and variable names that are concise yet informative. Um, make sure and do your best to remove everything that is not relevant to your problem. The shorter your code is, the easier it is to understand and the easier it is to fix. Actually, sometimes once you've gone through and cleaned, uh, cleaned up your code and done these steps, you may actually have solved the error yourself. Again, finish by checking that you've actually made a reproducible example. Make sure you start a fresh R session, copy and paste your code into a script. All right, so you should probably spend some time also preparing yourself to solve problems before they occur. Investing just a little bit of time in R each day will pay off in the long run. All right, thank you guys for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. I'll see you guys next time.